I've got a bit of hands-on experience working with binarongs, but this is actually the first time I'll be vetting on them. You excited? I'm excited. Look at that little face. Oh, you're so cute. Dong Dong's pretty young. She's only seven months, but she's pretty tractable. It's easy to work with her. There you go. There you go. Come here. Oh, up, 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 up. I'm sorry. There it is. <laughs> this is what happens when you stress out a bear cat. I guess I deserve that. As any wild animal, they can easily get frightened and scared. Like when there's a lot of people around, there's a lot of noises, when there's food nearby, you can see energy levels change, you can see her get excited, you can see her get stressed, you can see her relax and hang out on my shoulder and just chill. And so we're getting all those mix of emotions just in the course of time that she's sitting and, and climbing all over me. Have you pooped and peed everything you have yet? Is there more where that's coming from, huh? It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. So I wanna look at your little hands. And just like that, you can kind of fold them out. Just like that. So I'm looking at all those little nail beds, looking at each little nail. For the sake of this exam, I'm gonna give this bear cat back to her handler where she'll feel safer and more at ease. While I finish, do a good physical exam on her, and then most importantly, taking a listen to her heart. Hey dude, can I take a listen to you? I've never heard a baby binturong heart. I'd love to hear yours. I'll let you take a look at this dude. This is the stethoscope. I want you to explore it and be comfortable with it before I put it on your little chest. You can take a little bite out of it, that's fine. I want you guys to look at his canines and just show you, look at those, look at the teeth, look at the teeth. If those teeth got a hold of you, that would not be fun. That's a pretty nasty bite, actually. I know, this is weird. Oh, your heart sounds good, dude. Nice, healthy heart rate, steady rate, no murmur, regular rhythm. Very happy with what I'm hearing here. I mean, this is why I travel. Don't get me wrong, I love to help animals. I do it for them. But a big part of it is selfish reasons just to get to do things like this. This has been one of the coolest mornings ever. Literally just hiked up this little copy, getting some amazing views with some really, really cool, all the baboons around here. You can see those guys. I just want to sit with you guys. What are you guys up to today? A little bit of grooming, a little bit of foraging. Might forage myself some a little bit later. You could use a personal groomer, you know. I need some sunscreen. I don't know how you guys do this. This early morning sun is already cooking me. What do you guys think about grabbing some grub? Aren't you hungry yet? Starving. Bro, let's go get some like banana pancakes and like a banana milkshake. I'm so hungry. Are you hungry yet? Bob, are you even listening to me, bro? All right, little brother. I'm gonna get out of here. It's very nice spending the morning with you. And I wish you all the best of luck today. I need to get some breakfast and put on some sunscreen. I'll catch you later, though, buddy. All right. You got to practice your climbing. You live in the trees, so you got to make sure you can climb. This baby slender loris is two weeks old, just a little infant. And this is the cutest little primate little face in the world. And this poor guy, he was found out in the wild by himself. His mother fell from a tree, and she didn't make it, and there's no way a little primate, a little, a little loris under two weeks old is gonna survive on his own. All right, coolest 34th birthday ever. I'm getting to hang out with this slender loris, and this is the first time this little guy has been climbing, and he's doing so well. I know you had a rough go, dude, but you are just cute as the dickens, man. So I've gotten the special opportunity to get to work with him, and spend some time with him and evaluate him, and I even get to feed him. How much does he need to eat total? Uh, well, we, we give him this. This is, this portion is enough for this small one. Okay, it's just one okay. meal. Can you do? Yeah. Okay, very carefully. Uh, so very slowly, you have to do. Yeah, mammals need their milk. 
And you're no exception, are you? Since he's not eating insects yet, the facility's created a milk that basically emulates the milk his mother would be feeding him. Did you get a yummy meal? <laughs> Was that a little nice milk meal? <laughs> Is that enough for you? This little baby Loris is left all alone, had no source of food, no source of protection, and was vulnerable to any predator that can be in that area. And he was rescued. He was given a second chance. Well, that was a perfect little meal for the perfect little slender Loris, huh? <laughs> you cute, hungry little thing, you. And now that he's been rescued, he's being cared for. He's getting the environment, the safety, and the food and the care that he needs to one day grow to be a big, beautiful, slender loris, and eventually helping with a breeding program or released back into the wild. I've got a four-year-old slender loris on my left arm, a two-week-old in my right hand, and this is just an amazing birthday. And today was awesome. I came out here because I wanted to see these animals and potentially help them if they need it, but I'm also getting to be a part of the conservation. And I'm so happy to see that there's people here that really care about their native wildlife and really want to get them back into the wild and help with their population. And I could not wish for a better birthday. My last patient today is a very special one. Her name is Raj Kali. And Raj Kali is a loner. She doesn't really get along with the other elephants. And my heart kind of goes out to her for that reason because she doesn't have this social bond with them and she's on her own. I told them she used to be a temple elephant and she was not cared for very well at that time and she's got a pretty significant abscess on her face. So Raj Kali was just spending a little too much time lying down. And she's almost got like a little bed sore. It's like a pressure sore. Yeah, like any animal, elephants can get abscesses, but they can be dangerous. You know, this infection can stay local. It can also spread to other parts of the body. And that's something we don't want happening. You can see that dirt in there. I just want to scrub all that out. That's a nice deep pocketing abscess. That's not good, because that's just trapping infection. So we're going to flush it from both sides. We're going to flush in here. We're going to flush in there. It's going to really help us in flushing this thing out, as opposed to just being one big pocket by itself. I just want to stir that around. That's a nice little flush. Oh. Raj Kali, you're being very good, baby. I know this isn't fun. I'm sorry. Look at that. Look at this. I'm getting it right out there. Exactly what we want to be doing. I just want to flush from this side, too. That's exactly what I want to see. Gosh, Kyle, you're being so good, baby. This is easy. That's perfect. What I want to do is actually feel and probe the extent of the wound. That's very important when you're working with an abscess. You need to know how deep it is and how deep you need to be doing your work, because those are going to be the most effective at trapping bacteria and, and manifesting infection. What you're looking at is a lesion that's this big. And we're lucky here that Raj Kali is tolerating this very well. And she's eating, which is a really good sign of an animal. Stressed out animals aren't going to eat. She might even know that I'm helping her out, but she's definitely letting us work with her, and she's very comfortable. Now that we've gotten this thing flushed out, we're going to pack it with an antibiotic. The flush was a general antiseptic. It just kills all kinds of germs and stuff, but this antibiotic is designed to kill bacteria. All right. Raj Kali, thank you. Thank you so much. You've been so good. You have been so good for your little abscess treatment. You make my job so easy, you know that? This could have been a really big challenge. This might not even have happened. And you were a sweet, sweet girl. You're a very special girl. I know you're kind of a loner elephant, too. So my heart really goes out to you, because I know you're not really getting along with these other guys, and you don't really like other elephants, and you just kind of like to do your own thing. And uh, it makes me want to help you, you know that? Yeah, I feel like I really had a personal connection with Raj Kali and getting that moment with her. That's something I really value as a vet and I love doing. It's not just going in and doing your work and, and, and working on the animal and doing procedures and doing, doing the vet work. It's it really a big part of it's you know, connecting with your patients and having that human-animal bond. It's special, that was, that was super special. <laughs> Thank you, baby.